Good evening, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this specific video. We will make this a meaningful topic over here, developing a model for exponential population growth. We have a equation over here, which represents exponential population growth and the growth of a specific item or organism over a period of time, depending on rate and its initial starting value. We have a number of items over here. This right here can very well be written as population at time t is equal to population at your start or initial population times e to the power of kt. t representing time, k representing some sort of a rate factor over here. k over here, let's just call that rate. Anyhow, take a look over here. You have a positive value over here. The k over here value is positive, which means what? In terms of time and over a period of time, the population is bound to increase. If you had a negative value over here, e to the power of minus kt, then you'd be expecting things to decrease over a period of time, not increase. Anyhow, when you're developing a model for exponential population growth, a hypothetical model, you cannot be worrying about environmental factors or disease or lack of resources. You are assuming here that the population would grow indefinitely. There would be no plateauing of that population. There would be no decline of that population over time. So we're assuming a constant exponential population growth. And let this video here specifically start with how we can come up with this formula. And we can do that via an integral of rate of change, after which we can look at some specific examples or applications. If you are looking at something which starts in terms of population over a period of time and what it ends up with, you are looking at the rate of change of that population over a period of time. And it's usually affected by some sort of k or you can derive some sort of a rate factor which expresses the change of this population over a period of time. And this right here is equal to exactly what you're seeing over here. If you're looking at this change in population over change in time is equal to this rate factor times this population which you have at the end of that experiment of that time and you flip the population in the dt you end up with seeing dp over p is equal to k dt now if you actually look at this rate of change equation and you add an integral sign over here k over here can very well act as a constant with regards to the time, you're looking at some sort of time at time t and you're looking at initial time which is zero when your experiment began. Here you're looking at some sort of initial population. Here you're looking at some sort of final population after a period of time. You can look at everything and rewrite it as this. We're looking at this and then we have this. You see this right here is my differentiating factor or you can say your dx or your dy is equal to k with regards to this t0 dt. When you integrate this, you have a hidden antiderivative which comes out in the form of just t. And when you know you do the antiderivative, the integral and this component here disappear. When you're looking over here, you have p to the power of minus one. But when you do that with regards to n plus one divided by n plus one, you know this brings the natural log. When you bring the natural log, now you have the upper limit and the lower limit and you do the difference of the two and you play those through. Here you end up seeing natural log, right, of pt, population at time t, minus natural log of p0, population at beginning time or at your start is equal to kt. You can also just write this natural log pt is equal to natural log po, population at time t plus kt. If you look at this right here, this right here, if you look at it as an equation which is expressed in terms of logarithmic factors or logarithmic functions and it very well looks like this equation right here y is equal to mx plus b except my mx component is this right here my b component is this right over here if we want to be a little bit more clear why don't we just write it exactly as we see it and we can then verbalize it y is equal to b plus mx here's my m here's my x Here's my y-intercept, here's my y-component. And you know this right here would be a linear equation right here. In terms of a graph, it would be a linear graph and it's a linear equation. But this is in terms of natural log. If you take the same equation, right, and you come right over here to this part right over here. Or you can even come to this part right here and we write this now and express it in terms of exponentials. The difference of natural logs or logs having the same base is equal to the quotient of those under a single natural logs. And you'll see this PT or PO. See, 
I have taken the difference of logs and brought it into this as a quotient is equal to kt. You can take the natural log on the other side and then you can say e to the power of kt, right? And then you can take this initial value here onto the other side, you'll have PO e to the power of kt. And here it is, the equation has been formed. This right here will be an exponential equation and when you graph it, you will have an exponential graph. The graph would very well look something like this. And since we're looking at populations, you can't have negative counts, you'll always have positive counts. It would, at time zero, you'd have a specific number here and then you would shoot up from there. If you were to look at this right here, it would be a linear equation and let me draw this linear equation, the graph of that, in, in the form of a linear equation with having natural log functions, it would be something which would look like this. My, this right here would be my PO component, right? The natural log PO and the, right here would be my mx component, the kt, all right? And what are you have with regards to your function, your time, you input that in, your this factor right here, and then you can easily determine your final value. Here, you know, you're looking at time with regards to your x-axis, then you're looking at population count with regards to your y-axis, and same here, population with regards to your y-axis, and then time with regards to your x-axis. So that right there is this population, exponential growth curve equation derived for you. You can see it in the linear logarithmic form and then you can see it in this exponential form right here. And now let's do some applications utilizing this specific equation. Now for the actual application part, we have this formula over here. We're looking at a specific organism, it's a yeast. It has an initial population count of 500. It buds every 20 minutes, which means it splits into two or we can just say from one, you'll get two. Every 20 minutes you'll get two, all right? And here's our time, 20 minutes. But you know, we're looking here in hours, so you know 20 divided by 60 minutes would be one or three hours. In one third of an hour it buds and you'll have two, all right? We have to find the growth rate in units of hour to the power of minus one. Here K is rep represented as reciprocal time, one over T, which would be one over R. What are we actually looking here for? We're looking here for the value k, and that's what we have to find. For this specific question, we have to find the value k. How can we go about doing that? You know you have the PO value, we have the time value, and we have to find the k value. This is what we have, but we actually have PT also. We know if it buds in 20 minutes, after 20 minutes, it would double in population, in which case the PT here will become 1000 and our initial population count is 500. So let's just put what we have in effect. We have 1000 here after 20 minutes because we know clearly it will bud. It'll split into two and you'll have two of 500 is a 1000 and you have 500 and then we have e to the kt. We also have time. Time over here is 20 minutes but time here has to be represented in terms of hours which is one over three. And now all you have to do is solve for k. Take this 500 on the other side, you'll have two is equal to e k over 3, right, k times 1 over 3 is k over 3, natural log 2 is equal to k over 3, and then k here is equal to natural log 2 times 3, and you can put a good value over here, and we might as well, natural log 2 times 3 gives me a value of 2.0794, but here the units will be hours to the power of minus 1. That right there is my k value, and I'm going to put it aside over here, 2.0794, hours to the power of minus one because that value will come in now for the next part of this question. Our next question is now how many yeast cells will exist after five hours? Well, now here what are we looking for? We're looking for this, the population at time t. We have everything already in play because we have this factor here and we have the time over here. You're looking now at this, the population at time t and we know the population at time initial which is 500. We know e easy. We know k over here is now 2.0794. We can omit the units for now and we know time is 5 hours and we, we have that. All you did over here, this factor right here, budding every 20 minutes is what gave us this very important factor which now runs through for these other questions. All you have to do is solve for this component and it will give you that. You can do this and hit it with regards to the exponential of e and then multiply by 500 and you'll have your value right there. I'm getting a pretty large value over here which I'll express in scientific notation 1.638 times 10 to the times 10 to the 7 and then the answer would be this in, in terms of cells. 1.638 times 10 to the 7 cells, it's a pretty large number. After 5 hours starting with 500 we've jumped to this very large 
amount. Of course, there are no checks over here in terms of the population constraints like disease, there's no lack of resources or environmental conditions, UV radiation, any of that, anything which would actively kill you, yeast is not present. So this population will continue to grow exponentially with time. So this question here is done and the answer looks good to me. At what time is the population count 500,000 cells? Where we are here looking for time t, we're calculating for that. We know we have a final value here in terms of the population that serves as our population at time t. We have our initial value here, 500, and we have a k value which is 2.0794, and now we're actually solving here in terms of t, and this is nothing more than just simple algebra over here to solve for that t. You can take the 500 on the other side and it's easy, and you'll get a good value over there. You'll get 1000 over here, is equal to e to the 2.0794 p and then you can do a natural log of 1000 is equal to 2.0794 t and then you can solve for t and you know here t is going to be very well in hours and i'm getting over here a value of 3.32199 hours and there's no need to be so specific here you can just say 3.32 hours in 3.32 hours we'll hit a population of 500,000 we can actually add one specific quick question and look at this concept of doubling time. Doubling time is the time it would take or it would need for a population to double. If you're starting with one, it becomes two. We have to find the doubling time. And you know, let's see what that is. Calculate the doubling time. Here, you know, PT or here should be twice the initial value, right? You can do two PO is equal to PO e to the kt and we're just finding the doubling time of course to find the doubling time you still need to have the k value but you see how we have substituted an algebraic expression for pt the time it needed for the initial population count to double and we can cancel the po's out because they would go out and cancel anyways 2 is equal to e to the 2.0794 times t then natural log 2 is equal to 2.0794 for t and you'll solve for t and let's do it you'll get natural log of 2 divided by 2.0794 and i'm getting 0.3333 here in terms of hours and you'll be surprised what this means when you multiply by 60 right you multiply by 60 and you're getting 20 minutes over here and this 20 minutes represents exactly what i had here from the very beginning the fact that this yeast budded every 20 minutes was already its doubling time but sometimes you're not provided this information. If you ever provided a rate factor over here and you're trying to find the doubling time, it very well, and you wouldn't even know this, you could very well calculate that based on this algebraic manipulation we've done over here, where you can simply substitute the population at time t for being twice the initial population, and you can carry it through and easily get to your doubling time. And with that, I thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned, have a nice day.